Hi, I come to day um, December uh, the 19th, 2015, um, as the um, SMMP, the first one, a social media MP, which, um, as I mentioned before, I think you know others should do, and have your own website to put your own ideas forward with regard to world solutions and the sol solutions for issues we may have at home, um, you know, in our own nation. Um, because um, I do feel that, you know, the politicians haven't got the time to um, think on every subject and that perhaps we as a collective people may be able to put forward ideas that they can utilise and take up. Um, uh, and, you know, the media too may be able to um, bring to the fore some uh, ideas that people may have put forward um, and that we may have a better... Um, world solution for all the issues we have and be a better combined commu community of the of citizens um but there was just uh two or three things just briefly i wanted to mention um with regard to this um uh, shooting by the police of jermaine uh, baker um and also of Mark Duggan. Um, I think it's a case, that, and certainly with Mark Duggan, there was a, a gun that was found nearby or, or with him, or I think it was found nearby him because it was found that he'd thrown it. Um, and also with Jermaine Buckler, it, uh, I know it's not proved yet, so they're looking into it, um, that a, a gun was um, by his seat. Um, now, I think, and, and also it's a case that um, from the Mark Duggan case, uh, um, there were... Uh, in, there's intimidation of the witnesses and some people are now not coming forward um, with regard to the Jermaine Baker uh, as witnesses because they fear intimidation. Now, um, I, I do feel that the riots that came about at Mark Duggan's case and this aggression that we see uh, that seems to be within the people there when the um, Police Complaints Commission held a, um, a meeting um, there's an aggression against it as if there's this potential for rioting again. Uh, but I do ask the community, really, you know, to consider what the police are supposed to do. You know, they're here to protect us. Um, now, they've got, may have intelligence, I think, on both of these issues, that there is a, a crime to be taken place. And if a gun is found on the person um, and, and they are shot, whether it's an imitation gun or a, a real gun, it doesn't matter because the police don't know whether it's imitation or real until after the event. Now, they're meant to be protecting the public and obviously why should they die as well for somebody that's carrying a gun? Because as soon as you carry a gun, whether it's imitation or otherwise, you're on the side of crime and you're stepping outside the protection of um, the police, really. And uh, I don't think that this rioting was justified at all for Mark Duggan, nor is it if people are potentially thinking of rioting um, to, to, you know, in defence of uh, Jermaine Baker, because, you know, until uh, there's no, I don't believe there's any reason for rioting, even if something has been done by the police, let it be done as with war, you know, we need to negotiate and speak on the issues and, and do it by dialogue um, and certainly if there's as I say guns present on the person the person themselves are culpable and I think it's a case that if there's intimidation of witnesses then there's obviously crime going on there and what are you what are pe what's the public doing coming out in writing in that sort of situation you're not on the side of of justice and and um, uh, and the, the peace and the community uh, the, you know, you're on the side of crime. You're supporting criminals, and um, obviously, if it's a case that it's proved that he's not a criminal, then that's a different matter. But then it still doesn't. You, you should, nobody should be going out rioting uh, at all in these situations. And certainly, when it's a case when if somebody knows that these people probably are involved in crime to a degree, and then they are shot by the police that are trying to protect us, the peace-loving, most of us being peace-loving. Um, you know, they, you, we, we're wanting them to protect us and they, you know, as I say, why should they die for a criminals? Um, and they've got to make a split second decision. Um, so what would you do if you have a gun pointing at you or potential of a gun there? Um, so I just ask people to be, have empathy, to put yourself in the situation, the police. Um, the other issue I just wanted to mention, uh, was with regard to UKIP, um, 
uh, they're talking about changing uh, Nigel Farage as the lead leader, um, or some are, and I, and I don't feel that he deserves that. I personally feel that he's done a lot for this country in bringing to the fore um, the need for a referendum, and near the, the New Kip party, due to its strength, actually caused the Conservative Party to offer a referendum. And even though um, they've only UKIP have only got one um, seat in the uh, in the House of Commons, um, I don't think it matters. He's done us a great service just by bringing this matter to the fore and establishing this um, party that has brought to bear something that I think the public do want to vote on. Um, and I hope very much he stays at least until the referendum is over so that he can put forward his feelings about why we should um, come uh, out, what his um, uh, idea is as how we can deal with these various issues that we are a little bit fearful about, you know, if we did come out, the economy, you know, the fact that Scotland may also decide to um, stay with Europe. And then my fear is, you know, that we're going to, the we have immigrants coming through to Scotland and then Scotland won't be stopping immigrants coming over their border into England. Um, and obviously we've got the issue that if we come out of um, uh, of um, the EU, we've, you know, would France create more problems and we get more people piling up at Calais and then they don't desist in uh, stopping them entering England through the Channel Tunnel. So, um, and, and obviously the issues that people talk about the economy. So, you know, I'd like to hear more about the what his vision is for if we do come out during the process of the referendum and how we would deal with these issues because they are a concern to me. And as I say, I, I do, regardless of what, if he never has a, a seat, I think he's done the country a great service and I thank him for it. Um, and I hope he does stay. And uh, it doesn't surprise me that 93%, um, I believe it is, of the public want him to stay um, because I feel he has a sincere and genuine um, um, commitment towards England uh, without being um, racist as such. It's a fairly reasonable view as far as I can see. As I'm not racist, you know, I, but I want, I can see England disintegrating under the weight of numbers uh, and the weight of, you know, benefit claimants, be it immigrants or even our, our own English people, the whites and other other immigrants. Um, and it's a case when we have the Eastern European countries uh, objecting to the four year um, uh, restriction, you, you know, they're thinking of their citizens. They're not thinking of England. All they want is their citizens to to uh, have, you, you know, be protected. Uh, they don't care what might happen to our economy in the process. So, um, you know, we have to think, all of us, even benefit, all benefit claimants as well, and people with the tax credits as well, you know, we we can't, which I believe the tax credit system came in, was provided by the Labour um, Party when they were trying to generate um, support for an election. Um, and these tax credits, I think, uh, are available to all, uh, and I, I think there may be, and it's quite a substantial amount of money each uh, year, something like 26 billion, I think it is. Um, you know, and it's actually, as far as I can see, I had a, um, a printout, is the, uh, the largest benefit of all the benefits, you know, council tax and uh, job seekers and that sort of thing. So, and, and that's a completely new tax brought in by Labour. And Labour will always spend because they're always talking in quotes for the people. But, you know, Labour is an ideal, um, uh, idealistic uh, format where you, you, you know, taking from the rich and giving to the poor sort of thing. But, you know, there's not always a balanced, uh, sensible means of doing this. And you have to... You know, it's the rich that create the jobs, um, and the uh, and the middle class generally that pay the taxes, that pay for the benefits, um, and you can't take the way of, can't take away the motivation of the rich to create money and to create business if you take all their uh, profits in tax. Uh, you know, it, you it's like you know the rich, the poor want to have more. You know, they want to have the TVs and the cars and a house and that sort of thing. 
Um, and obviously, you know, you, you may get some rich that are uh, sort of take advantage, but I think generally the rich are not like that. And many of them do give to charities and that sort of thing. So there has to be a balanced view, and we have to be honourable as well that when we're on benefits, you know, that we don't take advantage um, because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's something to give us as a safety net while, until we can improve our situation. And when we're young, we have to work towards improving our situation. We can't have everything immediately. And, um, you know, and, it, and they work hard as well, the rich. Uh, so uh, as well as we, you know, they're not so rich. We all work hard. Uh, and sometimes the self-employed work harder than those that are in employment. Um, so, you know, we need to have a balanced view. Uh, the other thing with regard to the war solution that's uh, beginning to come to the fore in Vienna and now in New York, I believe, I thank the politicians and the world leaders that they are beginning to come to uh, hopefully a resolution. I thank you and thank them so much and, and the rebels as well for coming together to talk. Um, and I hope with all my heart that something will be resolved um, uh, in a, a way that, you know, everybody can be um, uh, satisfied and that even with President Assad that he won't be, you know, we we don't want harm to come to him and we don't harm to come to the rebels nor to the Syri Syrian people. Um, let us, you know, hope to go forward with that. Um, I still feel Mrs Merkel has caused some damage by putting out this call unilaterally for the, the refugees that the, Germany is willing to take them and she, she did this without the agreement of the rest of Europe and was speaking in a manner on behalf of Europe and she's made this refugee crisis rather worse, worse. and I do feel there must be some acknowledgement of that either she steps down and maybe takes control of the issues of the refugees only um, you know, and, and somebody else takes uh, her position. But um, I feel some apology or some acknowledgement should be should be made there. Um, and with regard to Donald Trump, I, I think he's um, um, vocalising what many of us feel about the fear that the uh, Muslim religion is is um, is creating in the world, because obviously this is where, although the Muslim most of the Muslims are. Um, working towards peace um yet the book itself the quran isn't really a book of peace because it's being read um i believe because it's being read um separate from the uh, books from before time which it says we should read so i believe we should actually bring in some law or some that if you buy a Quran then you have to buy the Bible as well because without the balance of that these two of, of the Bible to, with the Quran then we don't get the true message of God and um, yes and obviously Donald Trump says that you know he would w want to establish a new relationship with Russia and I'm very pleased to hear something like that because I think we must set aside this ongoing antagonism toward Russia we, you know we we must you know, set uh, set aside what has happened in the Cold War and that sort of thing. There must be a new, a new um, uh, coalition of countries, someone else. But you know, to include all the countries of the world, and that we may have a new, um, like war task force that's in the world, where as soon as a a war begins to develop before it erupts into this ongoing situation that we've had this last five years, that this te a team goes in to resolve the issue, that it's maybe UN-based, and as soon as something is going on, or has, and even the ones that are going on at the moment, that once we, hopefully we Syria is resolved, that the other wars are resolved as well, and that, and again, as soon as some um, issue begins to occur in between two countries or within a civil war or something, that a team is sent in to resolve it. Um, and um, I just wanted to also mention about um, Malala, who was won the um, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, who was shot um, in Pakistan. Um, obviously, a very courageous young woman, intelligent young woman. Um, but there was a Channel 4 interview yesterday, I think it was on the 18th of December, where they interviewed her and a couple of um, other um, uh, Muslims. Um, but she was saying that 
we shouldn't speak against against Islam and Muslims because we will create more terrorists and do not blame them um, because we all need to be accepted in this world and deserve the right to live and a normal people um, now obviously of course you know we we are we we're all wanting them to live but it's obviously the Muslims that are killing the people and if we're not allowed to speak against them as the Muslims or criticize Islam then surely we are going to fall prey to submitting to what is going on and submitting to the terrorism and, the, and that isn't right surely um, we need to put ourselves in the position of the politicians and of those trying to protect their state like France has to protect their state they've got numerous uh, they've had several incidents now of gun gunmen um, you, you know Muslims in this country and in the West benefit from the, the Christian world that has been created due to peace or maybe even the secular world because obviously it's because of the dividing of the religion from uh, politics that we have the peace and the benefits that we have in the Europe and in the USA and other countries that are, are benefiting. Now, it is not 100% because I don't like pornography or paedophilia or um, gambling or all this drinking and the use of drugs and I think something could be said to, about that. I also think that perhaps, you know, women do reveal too much, you know, well I'm talking about being half naked nearly um, and having very very short skirts or you know where they, it's really much too much possibly but um, so there may perhaps be a balance but I don't think it's to the extent that the Muslims cover themselves nor do I think the Quran supports it because if you read the Bible and the Quran which I have done and I think all Muslims and Christians and all peoples should do or if they don't read that then read a book that I've brought out which is a certain myth or is it true uh, it's free online, a certain myth.com, which gives the errors that the, the basic message that I believe is of God, the one true message of God, having read the Bible and the Quran, and the errors that I think we're being taught by, by Christian and Muslim and um, Jewish preachers, which are not always based on the books, they're just things that are from our culture or what we've been brought up as, uh, you know, from our families or in society. And this we need to address. Um, so I think um, I think it's a case of not, you know, necessarily banning the Quran to an extent, which I think might have a place because it is anti-Semitic. Because there is a, a um, verse in there which says, "Do not befriend Jews and Christians." So I ask Muslims, how can we, um, how can you integrate if you've got words in there like that, you know, and um, you know how how are we meant to view you if you're believing words like that? How can we ever integrate with you, uh, believing that you're wanting to integrate? Because ultimately, in your heart, you have these words, not wanting to be friends with us. Um, but I think this is, you know, this is why I say it's not a case of banning the Quran, but but balance the books, these two books, the Bible and the Quran. So I ask the media and the politicians. Um, to look on this issue and look at my website certainbattle.com and certainmyth.com. look at the other video clips I have there um, particularly one um, that saying the Quran does confirm that Jesus is the son of God and I establish this due to the chromosomes um, that we know med medically now because the Quran does actually confirm Jesus was uh, miraculously conceived because the Quran says God says be and it is God does what he wills and this is in, indicates that it's saying the angel spoke the word and, and um, Mary was miraculously conceived so there was no man involved and if he was miraculously conceived then the chromosomes ne needed for an embryo to be had to be provided by God which makes him the son of God so um, let's have this policy of balancing the books uh, these two holy books um, and I just ask the government worldwide, the governments worldwide and the world leaders, um, the Pope and the Archbishop of, of, of Canterbury in particular because I think we should also banish the Trinity because that isn't right or, or also the um, issue that Jesus is the God as well as being the Son which isn't right as well and I will go into this in a new video clip which I'll do 
um shortly.